Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Glory Room. I'm Prophetess Lou. I hope you all are having a blessed day. Let's get started with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for being our God. We thank you for being our maker. Most of all, we thank you for forgiving us of our sins. We thank you for allowing us to be in your presence this morning. Father God, as we partake in this word, we ask you to help us apply it to our life. We ask you to help us to not just be doers, but not just listeners, but doers as well. Father God, we ask you right now make us more compassionate make us more loving make us more uh like you and father god we just thank you bless the ones that are hearing it bless the ones that are reading in jesus mighty name amen okay like every sunday we always have a uh a new memory verse it's proverbs 10 12 hatred stirs up conflict but love covers all wrongs verse of the day galatians 3 and 3 how foolish can you be after starting your new lives in the spirit why are you now trying to become perfect by your own human effort? Subject with growth comes era. Affirmations. I'm going to say it and pause on each one, give you opportunity to say it if you like. I am growing. I am powerful. God is with me. God is my guide. I'm sorry, I said those way too fast. Let me start over. I am growing. I am powerful. God is with me. God is my guide. Okay, sorry. When I first gave my life to God, I I thought I had to do all this change by myself. And honestly, it was tough. I tried it all by myself with no help. And I noticed nothing was changing. And I noticed was, and I noticed it, and I was irritated. One day I was cleaning my room and I heard a voice of the Holy Spirit so plainly. He said to me, Lou, I said, yes. He said, what are you doing? Why are you doing this alone? I said, well, I have to clean up. And I stopped. I said, what do you mean? He said, you're trying to change so much of your life. You're not giving me any opportunity to help. I said, well, I just thought I have to do this on my own. He said, no, you don't. He said, the reason you see no change is that you're doing it on your own. I sat down and I said, but how could you help me? I I do not understand. He said, I am the Holy Spirit. He said, when you need, when you have a question or you need help, you're supposed to come to me. Honestly, I I was so used to doing things myself. I thought that this was like a me journey. As I grew in God, I realized this journey that we are on with Christ isn't a you journey. It's a we journey. It's a journey between you and the Holy Spirit. It's a journey of developing and growing. The only way to grow on this road is by slowing the Holy Spirit, by slowly allowing the Holy Spirit to change us. That is true, authentic change. Songs, songs 130 and 5 says, wait for the Lord. My soul waits in his word. I hope. See here, David says, I am waiting on the Lord. He says, say, says my soul waits on him. Everything's about waiting on God. When he gets ready to move things out of your life and change things from in us, it will be a change you won't even notice. It will happen. You go by, go, you'll go on about your day and all of a sudden others will notice, but what we must do before we get to this point is surrender to the Holy Spirit and tell him, I'm surrendering my life to you to do what you want to do. Letting go, surrendering, submitting every aspect of your life, my life to him. Lamentation 3, 25 and 26, the Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It's good that that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. The, the Lord will always be good to you. And for you, especially when you seek him with your whole heart. The Bible verse today tells us we can't do anything without him. And when we seek him, he will always give us what we need. He will always show us where we went wrong so that we can be better. Change doesn't happen overnight. Change happens with small steps and minor hiccups. You have people wanting to change and they think it happens immediately. No, my friends. Change happens when we allow ourselves to make mistakes. Change happens when we, when we give our grace, when, when we give ourselves grace and God gives us tons. But we must learn to give ourselves grace so we can accept His. Because we can give, we can give us, He can give us grace all day. Still, if we aren't willing to say, I messed up, I'm sorry, and give ourselves room to grow, we won't. Learn to forgive yourself as you go on. Psalms 25 and 5. Lead me in your truth and teach me for you are the God of my salvation. For you, I wait all day long. This is one of my favorite verses because David, a king, David, 
the great warrior is humbling himself and asking God to lead him to truth and to teach him. David understood that change happens when we surrender and wait. Waiting is another step of growth. Waiting for him to show us. Waiting for him to speak. Waiting for him to be there for us today. Growth is a slow process. Growth is a road a lot of people hate to go on because with growth comes change and change dependency on God. We are letting go and holding on to what he is teaching us. Letting go of messy ways and hold on to him. Letting go of drunk nights to prayerful nights. Letting go of days getting high to the sky to relaxing his presence. Letting go of days dancing into the sound of club music to now dancing because you want to praise him. Change can happen when we allow him in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything. We thank you for helping us change into what you want from us. Lord, we ask as we grow that you help us see more of you. Lord, we want, we want to dwell in your presence. Lord, growing in, Lord, growing into this person that you want isn't isn't hard. It's letting go of what we know. Letting go of the comforts and lights is what it's hard. But Father, help us every day to kill our flesh by submitting to you. Lord, we are grateful for the grace you've given us. We are thankful for the love you always shown us when we mess up. Lord, we are so, so thankful to serve an awesome God. We pray, we speak peace over our loved ones and over our life and abundance of your blessings to reign on us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So the topic today is with growth comes error. Reason why the Holy Spirit chose this is because a lot of times when we grow and we make a mistake, a lot of us are hard on ourselves. We are hard on ourselves and we don't accept that we made a mistake. And a lot of times what happens is we get so bogged down on what we didn't do and how we didn't handle everything. Excuse me. Sorry, my mouth is dry. And we get so caught up into... I made a mistake that we don't give ourselves any room for grace. God gives us a ton of grace, but we must say, okay, I made a mistake. I messed up. Let me just correct this error. Let me just move on from what I'm doing. Let me, let me, let me just say I made a mistake and it's okay. Some of us are so hard on ourselves that that's why some of us have anxiety. That's why some of us are depressed. That's why some of us don't change because when we make a mistake, we feel like it's the end of the world and it's not. You sin. Yes, it's it's wrong. Yes, you must confess that you made a sin to, to God. Yes, you must do those things. But don't hold on to it because you won't grow because you'll be still so focused on the error. We have to give ourselves room to breathe and say, okay, I am made of flesh. I'm going to mess up. Okay. Another thing I wanted to point out in here is, um, let's see. Change doesn't happen overnight. A lot of us think change happens overnight and it doesn't. Now, some things God will relieve us of immediately when we come into Christ. Like it was the drink, drinking. He took away from me the cussing. Um, he took away after a few days because I was, I asked him, he, he take away, he took away just like that. Um, a few other tendencies and things that I was dealing with, he took it away because it was in his will. Now, some things he would leave us with, like Paul. Paul had said a verse one time. Um, trying to look it up because I don't know the exact location. Um, Paul had said something one time. It's in um, 2 Corinthians um 12 and 7. He said this. He said, um, I guess I just paraphrase it because it's not pulling up. My Wi-Fi this morning is not cooperating with me. I'm trying to find it. So I hate paraphrasing because I don't want everyone to think that I just paraphrase everything, but sometimes I just be, it's only got 30 minutes, so I can't, um, I can't do it. Um, give me just a few more minutes. Okay. In verse, in second Corinthians 12 and 7, he says, are because of these sort of trespassing great revelations. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh and messenger of Satan to torment me. He's saying right there, he said, 
that Christ gave him a thorn in the flesh, God can remove anything. He can move everything off us. We can just be just sitting in perfectness. But no, he got to leave us something to keep us humble. He got to give us something to keep us on our knees. And the one thing I thought he was going to leave with me was the one thing he didn't leave with me. The one thing he left with me was my my temper. And so that's something I have to work on daily. That's something I have to actually go to him every day. God, show me grace. God, show me how. Show me how to do this. Show me how. He shows me every day how to deal with it. And I've, I've gotten better with it every day. That's a thorn in the flesh. So, yeah, he can remove everything. Don't don't get me wrong. God is amazing. He can remove everything from you. But if you do that, like Paul said, you become conceited. He said, I was given a thorn in the flesh. He said, three times I plead with the Lord to take it away from me. I pleaded God to take it away. Take it away. Give me something else. But what you must look at is that if he takes that away and you have something else, that thing might be just as hard. That thing might be just as worse. And see, also when you get past a certain sin, and you, you let's just say for me it was drinking. I got past drinking. Let's just say he didn't take it away from me immediately. Okay, I learned not to depend on drinking. I moved on. Here comes another thing I have to work on. It's always going to be something you have to work on. You're not going to just not have nothing to work on in your life. It's always going to be something. But with this change, with this working for and pushing for, you are doing it in God. You are doing it with God. You're not doing it alone. He also go, go on to verse 9. He said, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient with you for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more badly about my weakness so that Christ's power may, may rest in me. He's saying that God, he's saying that God's power is made perfect in my weakness. When we are weak, when we are, when we are having this moment where God, I'm, I'm about to sin. God, I feel like I'm, I'm about to do something I don't need to do. He is right there. His power will come in, change the atmosphere, change what you're doing. He will move something out of the way. He will do everything he can, everything which is possible within the will of him. He'll do everything to make you change what you're doing. Because it says right here, his power is great when we are weak. And I know some people probably be like, why do I have to be weak so he can be strong? Because it shows that we depend on him. It's the dependency. It's the dependency we talked about in the devotion. We have to learn to depend on God, not ourselves, not our will. Like me, for instance, I was so used to depending on myself to doing things, but I had to learn that I can't do this by myself. I can't do this alone. I have to do this with him and him alone. We can sit here all day and say, oh, I'm, I'm this, oh, I'm that. I can do everything by myself. I'm an independent woman. I'm an independent man, self-made man, self-made woman. Okay, you can say all that. But when you're walking in Christ, you're not self-made. You're not an independent person. You have to depend on God. You have to depend on the Holy Spirit. You must listen to the Holy Spirit. The only way to depend on him, you must listen to him and hear him. And a lot of times we don't stop and listen to the Holy Spirit to be able to learn how to grow in our situations. Okay. And also, okay, verse 10, he says, this is why of Christ's sake, I delight in weakness and in insults and in hardship and persecution and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. He learned that when I am weak, I am strong because God is with me. God has given me his power to walk in whatever is happening, whether it be prosecution, whether it be insults, hardship. See, some of us, we get so messed up when people are insulting us. We get so upset when people try to make things harder for us. Don't get upset. Don't let people insults bother you. I, I have someone right now in my life that I'm dealing with. I'm not in my personal life work wise. Um, they giving me a hard time and I used to be get so upset. I would get so upset. I would just get the fussing and I'd be so angry. And one day I thought about it. Why am I going to get upset? Because this person isn't listening to me. And I stopped. I was talking to my mom about it the other day. And she was like, oh, I'm surprised you're not angry. She said, you're very calm. I'm like, why? Why would I be angry? Because I took on this new thing. And the Holy Spirit placed this new thing in me. You're not going to disturb my peace. However you want to act, whatever you want to do, as long as you do it, I don't care. You're not going to disturb my peace. 
nothing's going to disturb my peace. Now, not to say that tomorrow <laughs> something might not sit well and I might be out of my peace, but that moment, that very day, that very subject, you're not going to break me. You're not going to shake me. Because in the insults, in the prosecution, in the hardship, I am going to be strong because Christ is within me. And he's given me the power because I am weak and I'm looking towards him for dependency. We have to learn where our strength comes. Our strength comes from God. Okay. Let's look at some um, verses because I wanted to really look at that. And just in case someone wanted to look at that, it's 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10. So if you want to look at that when, on your own spare time, you can. Um, that was to me a, a great verse to look at while we're studying this particular subject on this devotional. If you got your Bibles, go to go to Galatians 4, 8 through 9. Galatians 4, 8 through 9. Galatians is in the um, New Testament. It is um, right behind, um, right before you get to Ephesians, right after Second Corinthians that we were just in. But I didn't have my Bible out, so. Four, eight through nine. Um, before you Gentiles knew God, you were slaves to, to so-called gods that did not even exist. So now that you know God for, or should I say now that God knows you, why do you want to go back again and become slaves once more to the weak and useless spiritual principles of this world? And the NIV it says formally, when you did not know God, you were slaves to those who by nature are not gods. But now that you know God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you are turning back to those weak and miserable faces, forces? See, when we are saved, we are saved from all the things that we used to do. That, that means you're stepping away from that life. Whatever it is you used to do, used to be obsessed with, or used to have a problem with, you step away. So... Paul is asking here, he says, before before you Gentiles knew God, you were slaves to these so-called gods that did not exist. You were slaves to your phones. You were slaves to shopping. You were slaves to uh, doing whatever you want, illicit sex, uh, masturbation, uh, uh, smoking, drinking, all these things you were obsessed with. These were your gods. They don't exist. So now that you know God, or should, should I say know that God knows you, why do you want to go back to again? Why do you want to go back again and become slaves once more to the weak and useless spiritual principles? Why do you want to go back? If you're growing forward, why do you want to go back? Why do you want to look back to what you had? And that was the Israelites problem. Every time something comes up, they're like, well, I remember when I was back in Egypt, I had plenty. Knowing that they were slaves, they didn't. They were delusional. There's no way you had plenty. You were slaves. You didn't have that much. So no, not only was they delusional, they, they kept thinking back. They kept going back mentally to days that was of old. When we move forward, we got to let go of that. We got to let go of the, 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 the ways that we used to be and the things that we wanted. We have to let go and look at what God is giving before us. And he's given us a new thing, a new way. So we ask us, even today, why are you going back to that? To the weakness. Those things are weak. Those things weaken you. When you're walking in, in, in uprightness and holiness, that weakens your, that your, your spirit, man. So why go back to that? Hmm? Why go back to being the person that everyone didn't like? And we're not looking at what everybody didn't like, but you was argumentative, you was aggressive, you was this, you was that. Now you're not, you're full of peace. So why leave peace to go to chaos? Okay. Let's look at another verse. I only got about five more minutes, maybe six. Look at Colossians 3 and 10. If you have your Bibles, go to Colossians 3 and 10. If you're right there, don't close your Bible. Flip two books over and you got Colossians. Okay? Trying to teach some of us how to guide through the Bible. Some of us don't know, but some of us do. We all have our own struggles. Go to Colossians 3 and 10. NLT, I'm teaching out of that by reading on the NIV on the screen. Okay. Put on your new nature, 
and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. NIV says, and I have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of Christ, uh, after an image of this creator. So it says, put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. Put on your new self. It, we just talked about this in the last verse. The last verse was asking, why are we going to our old self? Why are we putting back on our old self? But this verse is saying, put on your new self so you can be, so you can learn to know your creator and become like him. When we put on our new self, when we walk in righteousness, when we're growing every day, we become like Christ. We have a Christ-like mind. You see, we have a Christ-like mind. In order to have a Christ-like mind, it's a, it's a devotional that I wrote about how to have a Christ-like mind. But in order to have a Christ-like mind, we have to die to ourselves daily. We have to pick up our cross daily. We have to ask for a renewed mind daily. Because we want to always stay in the mind of Christ. Because when we do this, we learn how to be like Christ. We won't be perfect, but we're striving for perfection. Okay? Let's look at our last verse. I won't have you turn to it. Since Titus 3 and 5, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing and regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. It tells us here, we, he saved us because of nothing we did. Nothing we did, but according to his own mercy, because he has mercy on us. That's how we're able to change and grow, because he's having mercy on us daily. He sees what we need daily. He gives it to us daily. He gives more, more mercy, more grace daily. By the washing and generation of renewal of the Holy Spirit. This happens when we allow the, we submit our ways to the Holy Spirit. We submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit. A lot of times we don't want to submit to the Holy Spirit because we know that once we start submitting, it's over with. Once we start giving ourselves more to God, it's, it's over with. Because the things that we used to do, the things that we want to do is over with. And that's what it should be. But we have a lot of people that are sitting in churches now. They wear the titles of pastor. They wear the titles of Christian. They wear the title as, as, as a Sunday school and a teacher or whatever, whatever. And they're not fully changed. They're going through the routine of going to church. They're going through the routine of going to vacation Bible school. They're going, they're, they're doing the routine of, of acting like there's something in there. Nothing in the spirit because they're not trying to change. They like all the, Ooh, you did good. Or, oh, look at so and so hand claps, applause. Hearts, thumbs, they, they like that. But are they changing on the inside? No. They don't want to change on the inside. They want to continue getting the applause of others. But let me tell you something, friends. Getting the applause and the claps and the thumbs and the hearts, that don't mean anything. I got over 2,000 friends on Facebook and no one likes none of my scriptures and stuff I post. And that's fine. That doesn't bother me. Because what the work that I'm doing, the work that the Holy Spirit has me doing, I'm not doing it for no hugs, no hand claps, no nothing. I had someone the other day give me a compliment. It was a nice compliment. I immediately said, I give glory to God. And he was like, you're, you're sort of a big thing. You, you're doing good, blah, blah, blah. Such a nice compliment. But I can accept the compliment because what I'm doing is not for me to get the accolades of others. It's to save souls. See, when we grow and we change, we realize that we must go out in the field and save others. We must go out in the field and save people that were like us or used to be us. But how can we get out there if we haven't grown, if we haven't changed? We must allow the Holy Spirit to change us daily, change our out view, change our, the way we look at things. We must learn to grow. And this is a daily process. We got 24 hours in a day to change what we didn't do yesterday. And some of us are struggling. Because we don't know how to let go of this world. So we're holding on to both worlds. And the world, and the word tells us we can't serve two masters. You're either going to love the one or hate the other. So if you're holding on to this world and you're holding on to God and you're trying to walk and grow, you're not going to grow at all. You're basically sitting stagnant. So choose this day who you will serve. 
And remember that growth doesn't happen immediately. Anyone that bothers you about, oh, you haven't changed. Let them say what they want to say. Like Paul say through the insults, the hardship, the, 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 the persecution. I am strong because I, I am in God. Remember that. You are strong because you're in God. Don't allow anyone to compare your journey with their journey. Because our, all our journeys are different, but we all are doing it with the same person, which is the Holy Spirit. We must grow with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Um, remember Jesus loves you. I love you too. Remember change is slow and it doesn't happen overnight. Remember Jesus loves you. I love you too. Have a blessed day. Thank you.